Um, I'm very excited to introduce you to our facilitator. I'm oh, so sorry. Actually, Amrita, it's your go. I apologize. I think you mentioned that you think you will give you the mic. No worries. Thank you. Um, just before we go into Hannah's session, I just wanted to share our deepest gratitude. We'll be doing a more formal gratitude share tomorrow. But for those of you who aren't going to be joining us, we just wanted to say thank you to our speakers for today, Darakshan, Neka, Sarah, Shakti, and Hannah, I'll give you a pre-thank you. Um, we are so grateful. Um, our board members, I won't say everyone's names because there's a lot of names on here, but our board members, thank you for holding us and helping us. Um, our Summit Hype Squad, like you all put in so much from note-taking to crafting our agenda to just like being on deck. Um, our SOAR team and our extended SOAR team, I mean, the gushing is going to come after and tomorrow, but like, and I don't even think I need to speak to it, but it is just, we have the most incredible team um, and specifically Yasmin, Himadri, Sagar, like being our core team and putting on this entire day and tomorrow, I couldn't be more grateful and everyone show them lots of love and then save some for tomorrow um, because we need to show them a lot of love again. Um, and then most importantly to all of you, thank you for being here and spending the day with us. It like means the world. And honestly, a Sunday summit is kind of fun. I feel like it has a different vibe and I'm here for it. So thank you all for joining us. And I'm so excited to close out today um, with the art making session, which feels perfect and a great way to capture everything that we've thought about today. With that, I'll pass it back. Or actually I have one last slide. Ismin, if you want to pop to the next one. Um, I think we're just going to close all of our summit days with this. I think this is like a great way to encapsulate how we feel, but um, it's a quote from Bell Hooks that says, for one of the most vital ways we sustain ourselves is by building communities of resistance, place where we know we are not alone. And I was just telling Veda earlier this week, like, I don't know if there's a great way for me to describe SOAR's like role, but the word that comes to mind is home. And I feel like it really is a home for so many people and organizations in the movement. And I hope you all felt that today. So that passing it to Yasmin. That was so sweet. I feel the same way about so, and I've heard the same sentiment from others. So it's really nice to have like the sense of belonging with a really great group of people. Um, but I'm very excited to introduce you to our facilitator, someone who I love like very deeply, the one and only Hannah. Uh, the first time I saw Hannah was our freshman year when she performed her poetry. I was absolutely captivated. I can't even honestly like remember what the poem was about. I was just like so in awe of her confidence and her presence and like the range, like the audience was really with her and you can tell I'm like, she's just a poetry master, but also so many other things. And as I got to know Hannah, I saw someone who very, very naturally like builds community, loves her people de deeply. Um, she brings joy and the humor in like every space that she's in while keeping it so real with her emotions. It makes her such a powerful and like inviting creative, which I don't find all the time. And she first introduced me to fat liberation, to introduce me to like making organizing a part of my everyday, um, and just asking the best questions that really like changed my notions of queerness, which is huge for me. Because um, to keep a long story short, Hannah was the person who really helped me come out as queer. Um, so I really feel grateful to be challenged and inspired by Hannah's art, by her organizing, and like most importantly for me, her friendship. So with that, I'll pass it over to Hannah to lead today's session. I didn't even show the, this is a little collage of photos. This is us at our graduation. Hannah campaigning for four years, trying to let me realize that I'm gay. It worked at the end. This is some of Hannah's art. Another glorious presentation by Hannah. Now we'll ask, actually pass it to you, Hannah. Thank you for waiting. Yasmin, I cannot believe this collage. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect to be um, gifted the title Gaydar Extraordinaire. So, You're wow. Welcome. Just, I'm just soaking in that um, appreciation. <laughs> And so delighted to be here with you all. Thank you so much, Yasmin, specifically for inviting me to share space with you. Um, learning about SOAR's work has been so inspiring over the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I asked Yasmin to tell our friendship story because it is a beautiful one. And you really, you really do hold me down in so many ways. I think we've both politicized each other um, and supported each other through some wild years. So I love you so much, my friend, and I'm so glad to be here with you all. Um, thank you for having me. I will share my screen and let's get into making some art. Okay. So we are going to be mapping our commitments today 
in the social change ecosystem. I'm Hannah Williams Barron. I'm an organizer here in the Bay Area. I'm coming to you all from Berkeley on Ohlone land. Uh, I organize for Fat Liberation with the group Fat Rose. Uh, and we are, we call ourselves an incubator for fat liberationists across movement spaces. So we have folks who are really committed to racial justice, utility justice, climate justice, prison abolition, uh, who all come together to be in community with fat folks and to help seed fat liberation work in other movement spaces, because we know that the struggles of fat folks um, are the struggles of everyone. And so we're all about building coalitions. So excited to be here with you all today. Um, and I also am a, we call them writing warriors with California Coalition of Women Prisoners. So I do pen palling and some prisoner advocacy with those folks as well. Um, so really glad to be here with you all. I know that all, all our movement work is so interconnected. So I was asked, invited to tell my arts organizer story, which felt daunting, but then also really fun. Um, I love that Yasmin mentioned like doing poetry, being in poetry spaces together, because poetry is really where I cut my teeth um, and was radicalized, frankly. Um, I started doing slam poetry in high school. It's like a little cringy, but I'm also very fond of that period of my life. Um, it's where I learned so many people's most intimate political stories um, and where I got to learn what my own were. So I remember writing stories about or poems about my experience of medical fat phobia in high school um, and sharing them on a stage, stories that I hadn't told my parents or my friends, but felt like I was able to do it on a stage because everybody else was taking that leap and being vulnerable as well. So now as an adult, I host poetry workshops for grownups and little kids and people who have never written a poem before and people who've written lots of poems and just really sweet to be um, in community with folks who want to tell their stories uh, and take the leap, which poems I think can help us do. I facilitate Heartwood Workshop, which I hope to bring back next year with another Oberlin alumni, Muntaha Muhammad, uh, where we're connecting uh, freedom movements with poetry and the folks who take that class uh, each pick a different abolitionist and study their archives and they write poems that are sort of love letters and in conversation with those activists. Um, so poetry for me as part of movement, poems, that is a space where you can take the risks that you're maybe too scared to take in the streets. It's a place where you can practice your courage. And then when you share it with your friends, you're building deep relationships of trust and vulnerability. And that turns into courage. And that lets you take the leaps um, outside of just the space of a poetry slam or a reading um, to enact the world that you want to be in. So that's part of where I see poetry fitting into my movement work. I'm also a comics maker. I'm a new cartoonist. I'm doing a, a comics making program this year. And we had a prompt recently about engaging with uh, cartoonists of the past. And I was struggling at first because frankly, like the folks who I'm reading didn't have a spotlight until very recently. Um, but then a friend was like, hey, look at Palestinian political cartoonists. Those are the folks who have been taking risks in this art form for decades. And so this is a, a slide of a rough draft of a comic about Najah Ali, who created the character Handala, who is a really important Palestinian figure um, that I would encourage you to look more into his work. But just thinking about how we can use our art forms uh, to do research on the movements that we're a part of and get much more in touch with the folks who we're lifting up. Lastly, I would say my next frontier of art making and movement spaces is with protest puppets. I feel really excited about um, this is a puppet that I'm helping to paint with some beautiful folks I'm in movement with here in the Bay Area. It's a Palestinian woman who you'll see in the next slide. Uh, we walked through the streets of Oakland just a couple of weeks ago outside of the federal building as some Palestinian families charged our terrible president with complicity and genocide. And having these puppets as part of the movement space, I think 
really shook the energy of the crowds. I think it having art that is so surreal um, and larger than life really reminds you of what's possible. Um, it shakes you out of the norms that you're in. It reminds you that there are other ways to be in the world. Um, and I think feeling larger than life as a movement is really important. Here's another puppet from that protest. You can see in the bottom of this slide, uh, we are holding papers and papers worth of names of Palestinian martyrs, only a small portion of folks who have been killed since October 7th. Um, but we see the ceasefire peace bird on top. And here is a, a protest banner with one of my favorite quotes, justice is what love looks like in public. I think art is also what love looks like in public. Um, and I hope that as we talk through our uh, political commitments, as we map our roles, we can think about, you know, what is an art action that you can take based on your skills or things that you're curious about trying that will be in service of the work that you're trying to do in the world. Because there's so many different ways it can look. It can look like a poem. It can be a puppet. It can be a banner. Um, it could be a stick and poke. I don't know. The future is ours. <laughs> so I will stop there. Thank you again for having me. And transition us now to remembering Deepa Iyer's amazing map of social change ecosystem roles. So I think Yasmin mentioned that folks have already been sitting with this today. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, sweet. So I will maybe read off these roles, but I won't do the full descriptions. But just to refresh our memory, uh, there are so many different ways for us to participate in the organizations that we're in. It's not all frontline disruptor. It's not all caregiver. There's gradients. There's multitudes. So you might be a weaver or you might want to become a weaver. You might want to try being an experimenter or a frontline responder. You could be a visionary. We need visionaries. Builders, a caregiver. You might be a healer. You might be a disruptor. You could be a storyteller. Or maybe you are a guide. And of course, many of us inhabit multiple of these roles and they overlap with each other in beautiful ways. But we're going to take a moment now, if you've got something to write on, hopefully you do, and we're going to do a little drawing exercise. Very low pressure, don't worry, I know drawing makes people nervous, but it's going to be okay, we've got this, you guys, we've got this. <laughs> so we're going to draw a single spiral, draw as tightly as you can on your page, and while you draw, let your mind wander and think about the movement roles that you're currently in, in your organization. Think about what roles feel satisfying and nourishing for you. Think about what you want to let go of. And think about what you want to nurture. So we're going to do just drawing a spiral for about five minutes, just the length of the song. And then we will come back together and move into the second portion of our art making. All right. I will share a song and we will get into it. Awesome. All right, let's end our spirals. I hope that that was soothing for your brain. Something about spirals, my brain just loves. I really, <laughs> I draw a spiral almost every day and I won't apologize. <laughs> We're going to move into drawing our commitments. So you might want to start a new page if you're writing by hand. If you're not, if you'd like to join us digitally, we also have some Canva activity that maybe Yasmin can link. <laughs> uh, but we're basically going to pick the role that we want to lean into in this next phase of movement work. And that's what you're going to title your drawing. I guess I'm getting you all to make a comic surprise. <laughs> um, and I'd love us to think about, yeah, the ecosystem, what's going to support us in this role. Uh, what are some of the activities that we're going to take on in this role? So you'll title your drawing, 
with your roll. Then you'll draw a flower or a tree, something that grows. And in the petals, I want you to write at least two or three of the actions that you want to take on in this new role. So for me, in my example, I said, sick of being a caregiver. It's time to take the stage as a storyteller. So my little flower is going to host an open mic, perhaps a fat liberation themed sexy open mic. I don't know. It's, it's going to be a fat sex open mic. That's what my flower is going to host. Uh, we're going to be making some poetry care packages for our people who are currently in the hospital, not experiencing fat affirming care. And this little flower storyteller is also going to work on an oral history project capturing fat folks' stories of resistance through time. And then in the sky, I want to have some sort of affirmation coming, giving me a reminder of the work that I'm doing and why it's important. My son, uh, was pretty short. She just said, you rock. <laughs> and then along the soil, give us some of the supports that are going to help you grow really strong in your leadership. So for me, I said my Fat Rose mentors, my Bay Resistance squad, and CCWP. Those are the folks that I'm going to turn to for support and mentorship and just to get loved on. So we'll take about 10 minutes to give ourselves some time and then we'll come back together. <laughs> 